Welcome back. In a moment, we'll examine how scientists are attempting to resolve the environmental issues caused by the lionfish. But first, here are some other stories to keep an eye on. An asylum seeker has been jailed for life in Austria for the murders of 20 wounded and unarmed government soldiers in Syria. It is the first time that a case involving war crimes in Syria has been tried in Austria. The suspect has not been named, but he is believed to be a 27-year-old Palestinian who grew up in a refugee camp in Syria. There have been more deaths during protests in Venezuela as anti-government demonstrations continue to hit various parts of the country. Embattled President Nicolas Maduro is under increasing pressure to step down. The socialist leader has blamed the country's opposition for stoking violence to remove him from power. India's Supreme Court is examining whether an Islamic practice which allows a man to divorce his wife in minutes, which involves repeating the word divorce three times, is fundamental to the religion. Muslim women's groups in India call the practice known as triple talak, a long-standing injustice to women. A company dedicated to solving environmental challenges has launched a robot designed to catch and kill lionfish in the Atlantic. Scientists fear the invasive and aggressive species is destroying marine ecosystems on that side of the world because it has no natural predators. Insight's Chloe Culpen reports on how technology can help. Mesmerizing and majestic. Looks aside, this is a deadly creature. These venomous spines that are on this guy, if you can see those tips of those spines, those little hypodermic needle-like things, those are full of venom. And if you were to get stuck by one, it is very, 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 very painful. The species originated in the Indian Ocean, where it has predators, and smaller fish know lionfish are dangerous. Populations are therefore under control. In the Atlantic, it's a different story. The fish were introduced about 30 years ago, and marine life wasn't prepared. Lionfish there have no natural predators and are eating almost anything. Things like grazers, parrotfish, that eat algae to keep it from overgrowing the coral reef. Cleaner species that pick parasites off other fish. And when they impact those populations, it's going to have a trickle-down cascade effect on the entire reef ecosystem. Experts believe lionfish were introduced to the Atlantic by a handful of people who no longer wanted them as pets. A single female lionfish can spawn more than two million eggs per year. Great efforts are now underway to control populations. Hunting by hand is effective, but can be a slow process. Robots in service of the environment is on a mission. Tech company Rise believes robots could be the answer. They've developed the Guardian, which can suck up to 10 fish before needing to resurface. We basically drive the Guardian up to the fish position it between those two electrodes, apply a current and stun the fish, knocking the fish out. And then there's a motor at the back of the robot which creates a current into the robot and it sucks that fish into the robot. The robot's developers are also hoping to create a computer game allowing people to go lionfish hunting live. Conservationists are also encouraging people to eat more lionfish. A cooking competition was recently held with top chefs, showing how delicious the fish can be. But while the robot is a step towards catching fish on a larger scale, there's still a long way to go before the populations start to fall and marine life in the Atlantic can swim easy again. Chloe Culpin, reporting for Insight. Graham Banton is a marine biologist at the Sea Life Centre here in London and he joins us Okay, we were both watching that report and taking a look at that thing on the plate. Just how delicious or how daring do you have to be to eat that? <laughs> it's supposed to be very tasty, and the most important thing is 
by eating the, the meat, the fish or the lion fish, it's perfectly safe. So they're venomous, the spines are venomous, but they're not poisonous, so eating the meat is perfectly fine. Graham, I go fishing every January with my boys, my, my kids in West Palm Beach, Florida, yeah. and we were there in January throwing, you know, tossing our poles over the side and pulling in grouper, and the guy next to me pulled out, okay, it wasn't that big, it's a fishing store. <laughs> it was about that big, which I would think he would throw it back, but they're, they're very well educated. The fishermen, they say, no, they're a big problem down here. They don't throw them back and yeah. they eat them. They say they're good eating. That's definitely one of the most successful strategies for managing them at the moment is educating the locals about how important it is to take them off the reef um, and eat them themselves, either sell them on fishing markets or encourage restaurants to start selling them. And then just down the road at Sailfish Marina where I go all the time, there was a, a, a guy who says, the only good lionfish is a dead lionfish. Yeah, they, I mean, it's, it's spreading really quickly, and there's even things called lionfish derbies now, which are competitions to encourage people, and there are prizes for catching the most lionfish in one day or the biggest lionfish is popular. Yeah, that's amazing, because one of the ones in West Palm Beach, I think it was Boynton Beach, the, the uh, West, West Palm Beach Post ran an article saying they caught 400 on the weekend, and those fish potentially would have eaten 3 million other fish. They're amazing predators. They can eat... Uh, they can expand their stomachs to twice the size that they are and uh, some of the specimens that have been caught have been found with 60 different reef fish inside their stomachs. They can eat things half the size of their body, amazing. Where did they come from and how did they get there? So originally they're from um, a habitat called the Indo-Pacific, so that's the tropical Indian Ocean um, and the Indonesian Islands and then round to the western and southern tropical Pacific Oceans. Um, that's their natural habitat, that's where they're from. Where they are now and where they've spread really quickly is down the Atlantic, through Florida, as you say, into How'd the Caribbean. They get the, people just dump them? The current theory is it's people having them in their aquariums at home um, and then irresponsibly re-releasing them. And it started in the 80s where people maybe weren't doing their research as well. Um, and weren't sure about how big they were going to grow or how long they were going to live and then, and then yeah, releasing them into the ocean. This has been called the worst man-made ecological disaster ever. That's quite a claim. I'm not sure about that. But certainly voracious predators, um, the existing predators in the area, the sharks and the mores and the, and the barracuda, because the lionfish are so novel, they just don't associate them as being, as being something they can eat. And the fish that live on the reef, the ones that are normally using it for shelter, they don't associate it as a predator. So it's, it's a twofold problem. That's really interesting that the fish on the reef do not see them as a predator. Yeah, so they have no flight response to them. So who, what, are, what will eat them? Right now, nothing. Right now, nothing. Uh, um, there's a few cases now in the Cayman Islands where they've seen some grouper predating on um, healthy lionfish, but it's the first time it's been seen. So that's why it's one of the only successful strategies has been us, us managing them, us catching them. And taking All right, them what else. do we do? How do we get rid of Continue these? Continue as we are. Um, certainly, we've learned a lot. One of the things that we, as environmentalists and as conservationists, are recommending we don't do um, is spearing them underwater, catching them underwater, and then feeding them directly to sharks and other predatory fish. Because what that means is um, the sharks are running risks of injuring themselves on the spears, but also it creates this cycle of dependence where the sharks are then looking for handouts from the divers that are under the water. By all means, go and spear them and take them out of the water, but take them to land, eat them, encourage your friends to eat them. That's the way to go. You know, by the way, when you look at Chloe's report, it's interesting uh, on the whole report about the robot and technology, which is called the, the Guardian, by the way, and it's crowdfunded. I mean, Americans are very entrepreneurial about this stuff. But that is not, um, that has to be operated. It is not automated. You would need thousands of those, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's, and that's why you need a spread of strategies, I think. That, that's definitely going to be part of the solution. Part of it's going to be people fishing them and taking them off the reef. But part of it is also going to be watching out for those behaviors of natural predators starting to eat them by themselves, and that's going to be part of the solution as well. And then the Americans have also invented a new fishing pole. It looks like a trident with, with kind of three have prongs they? on it. They have triple threat. <laughs> yeah. And they're selling them online. They'll oh, probably sure. make a lot of money. They're also in the Bahamas, the Caribbean. Uh, they lay 30,000 eggs every seven days? I when, mean, they're, when they're breeding, yes, that's what they can do. Over the breeding season, a female can lay two million eggs. So they're produced very, very quickly. And actually, there's been some sightings in the Mediterranean recently for the first time, too. So their range is not just restricted to Florida, uh, Florida and the Caribbean. There's economic impact here, right? Because a lot of people that fish on those reefs and pull off tropical species on those, on mm -hmm. those reefs are seeing tropical species disappear, yep. almost. Yeah, and a lot of the species that the lionfish are eating as juveniles, they use the reef as um, a nursery ground as protection before they're ready to venture out into the open ocean, and which is where they are economically viable fisheries. If the lionfish are eating all those juveniles first, that fishery is under threat. So why don't you have them at the aquarium? 
Uh, we, we will have them again in the, in the future, I'm sure, but not just yet. I had them in a fish tank, and they, they actually did start to eat everything in the fish I'm tank. I'm sure they did, yeah. They did. So I, if we don't get a handle on this, I mean, what are you worried about? Does, or do you feel that there's momentum now? I mean, we've been talking about this for a decade. Yep. So they're, they're, it's, it's widely known they're a threat. Yep. Fishermen are pretty keen on getting rid of them. So do you feel that we're turning a corner, or... Definitely, what the yeah. we, we know a lot more about what we're doing in terms of managing the, that population now than we, than we did 10 or even 20 years ago. Um, the test will be with this new Mediterranean population, these sightings in the Mediterranean, whether we can translate that over and manage these new sightings, this new potential invasive threat as well. I've heard that they were even, now don't smile, they were <laughs> actually trying to train, I'll, I'll smile for you, they were trying to train sharks to eat them. That's true, um, but as I was saying, the problem with that is, if you feed them the dead lionfish, then the sharks become used to taking handouts from divers. What we want to encourage, or what we want to see, is predators naturally taking these healthy lionfish from the water, which is what these groupers in the Cayman Islands Don't you think the British should do their part here? Somebody in the control room just suggested we should have them in fish and chip shops here. I'd love to see them in fish and chip shops here, yeah. It'd be much better than seeing cod on the menu. Graham Benton, it's uh, l lots, of, lots of jokes, but a very serious issue about very getting rid so. of them and what they're, how they're devastating fish populations. Definitely, yeah. They, um, they're a voracious predator. Nothing's really predating on them. They eat 50 different species of reef fish. It's definitely a serious issue. Graham Benton, great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. We end with our inside bite, a little something that we feel you should know. Tens of thousands of people have visited the Sri Lankan capital to celebrate Vesak a festival that marks the birth, enlightenment, and death of Buddha. To millions of people across the world, it's the most important day on the Buddhist calendar. Colombo is decorated with lanterns, colored lights, and Buddhist flags. These celebrations are just one of the many festivities taking place this month as worshipers ring in the holiday at the region's most beautiful temples. That's all for now. I'm Dana Lewis, and that was Insight.